So this song will simply say that praise is rise from the inside.
his wife, all the way from Liberty, Mississippi. Amen. Amen. Elder Swims and uh, the shot. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But definitely thank God for everybody. Uh, Mother Frost, of course. Um, and I definitely apologize, man. Y'all see, we've been busy. Y'all been really extremely busy. It never stops. Um, and we got to be okay with that. Um, but I'm going to share some things with you, some thoughts with you real quick, because I know the question came up, well, who's going to minister, or who's going to preach your appreciation? Well, <laughs> voila. I don't know when it comes to me, and, and definitely my baby girl, Tamir, being in the house. Yeah. Girl, look, I didn't see you hide behind the camera. <laughs> Amen, but definitely thank God. Um, but um, when it comes to me, and, and my ministry. Um, when I first started out, I used to compare myself to Bishop T.D. James, Bishop Paul S. Moore, everybody, everybody. I, I compared myself to everybody that was already doing this. And uh, one day God sat me down, man, and he rebuked me in love and said, I didn't ask you to be like them. I asked you to be who I called you to be. And so that's why a lot of times when I do things that are unorthodox, it messes y'all up. Because at the end of the day, you're like, well, why he ain't doing it like this? Why he ain't doing it like that? Because this is the way God told me to do it. Amen. 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 If we ride this thing, man, if we ride this wave right, oh my God, this will blow our minds. I mean, you know, just to see where God is coming. I mean, because somebody said they were going, y'all were going to be messed up when y'all saw TVs back in the church. The t you know, and these ain't the same TVs that people stole after Hurricane I. Yeah, yeah, they, these are bigger TVs. <laughs> bigger TVs. So yeah, we'd have been through some things, but you know what? I still see God in the midst of it all. Yes, yes. yes. I was up till maybe about one thirty. That's why I saw some of the slides was like. Uh, like all this, about 1.30 uh, in the morning, just preparing for today. At the end of the day, like I told you, it's all about God getting the glory. Oh, well, you going to be sitting down and I, I would love to. See, that's what y'all missing. It. Come on, now. We're missing the weight of God's glory on my shoulders as the reason why I do the things that I do. Do you think I want to be this busy? But until somebody steps consistent, let me be, let me be, be clear. Until somebody consistently steps up and step in, what other choice do I have? What other choice do pastor have? Everybody said pastor needs to slow down or pastor needs to do that. Or pastor, okay, an hour sermon pastor was long enough. I mean, yeah. But until somebody else steps up and steps in, what else do y'all expect me to do? I love this. I never get tired of this. Amen. And so, it, look, I, I was sleeping in the church. I told my wife, I said, uh, we, we spent the night last night. And uh, she slept in cozy in the bed across the street. And I know it would have been even cozy if I was laying next to her. Amen. But I told her, I said, I need to, I need to spend some time with God. Amen. I, 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 need to, I need to lay down in the church and I need to talk to my dad. Because don't think just because I act like I'm flowing and act like I got it all together that I don't have my moments. Amen. And in the midst of, a, of my 18 year appreciation, I'm having a moment. Amen. Amen. But like every other day, he got me up, bright eyed, bushy tail. Went rain the Sam's, went doing this, went doing that. Uh, I forgot all about, man, I got I did your songs. <laughs> I forgot all about it, then I, I started working on it. You can kind of tell where I fell asleep. <laughs> uh, let praises ride. At, at that time, I kind of called it a night. Uh, but, you know, I, I love this, y'all. And if God gives me another 18 years, I'll keep on doing what I do because the day that I can't do what I do, is the day maybe he calling me home. I, I'm, 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 I mean, me and God going to have a serious talk. The day I can't do what I do, what I love doing, God, you might well take me home. Because I found no better joy, no greater joy than to be serving him through serving you all. 
Amen. Amen. And there are some people that stream with us and all this stuff. There's people I go and visit, and they always shower me with their love and their honor and their admiration. And it always humbles me to make sure that I keep doing what I do to the glory of God. So look, I want to share this with you real quick because this goes in line with basically, I was like, Lord, where do you want me to go? I ain't never preached or, or spoke at my own appreciation before. <laughs> um, so I, I believe he, he, he gave me the green light to go here. Um, and y'all are kind of, I guess y'all will let me know. <laughs> if otherwise, oh, um, da, 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 da. Trying to see, did I have it on here? Did I have it on all these different tablets? On my phone? Ain't that some stuff? Hey man, I think I got it on my phone. I meant to change it to my tablet, but uh, okay, all right. This is a quick thought, and I know I always like to give a, a, a quick thought sometimes, just like Abigail got her fun facts. This fell in my spirit maybe about a week or two ago. A title doesn't make the person. A title don't make the person. You could say you're a husband. You could say you're a wife. You could say you're a man, you're a woman. You could say you're a doctor, you're a lawyer. But at the end of the day, I could say I, even I'm a pastor. But at the end of the day, a title does not make the person. Maybe that's why we've been kind of discombobulated because we thought, some of us may have thought that if I got a certain title, yeah. mm -hmm. then my life would improve. Mm -hmm. My situation would be better. And for you to only find out is just the opposite. Yeah. Because the word of God reminds us to whom much is given, much is. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. The word of God reminds us to whom much is given. There's a responsibility. That comes with every facet of life. Do y all, we all agree with that? Amen. Amen. I've learned that the hard way. Thought I could be so grown to leave and run, you know, not run away from home, but couldn't wait to be 18, couldn't wait to be out on my own, do my own thing, only to be humble and be reminded that there was a lot much more to being grown than what I perceived from my parents. They made it look easy. The problem is, I didn't have the understanding that they had. Yes. Same thing with a lot of us. We struggle because you thought something was going to be easy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Only to find out somewhere, somehow, you've lacked some understanding. Yes. And it's got you all messed up. Mm -hmm. But I believe Jesus Christ is here to, to set all that straight. I really, truly believe that. So, a title doesn't make the person. Well, if a title doesn't make the person, what's the point? It's the person that makes the title yeah. be what the title is. Yeah, right. With their integrity. Uh -huh. Now, when I got married and I, be and, and I became my, my wife's husband, honestly, it was just papers that I signed. Yeah. What makes me her husband it's not the papers I sign, but the, the the integrity that I bring to the relationship. Because other than that, she might start having feelings of regret. Yeah. Not wanting to be married, or at least not wanting to be married to me. And who could, who could blame her if she thought, based on what we know about husbands, that this is what to expect. And I didn't fulfill that. So stop leaning on your titles. Well, I'm your mama. There's a problem with that. Naturally, yeah, you are their parent. But because of a lack of integrity, being a mother or a father, you are expected to conduct yourself and carry yourself in such a way mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. where you shouldn't even have to remind somebody that you're their parent. Yeah. Yeah. It comes automatically if you have done this right. Mm -hmm. 
Because there's, there's some things, my children, tell, there's some conversations I, I'm not about to have with you. I'm just not. Why? Because I'm your parent. There's some things I don't have to explain to you. Why? Because I'm your parent. Now, if I have conducted myself in other ways, if I have acted more like your friend than your father, then I can understand why you're trying to have this type of conversation with me. But that's not the case. I've done my best over the course of my oldest son. I think he's about 30, getting ready to turn. Yeah, he's 30, getting ready to turn 30 this year, I believe. So in the course of 30 years and me growing and me learning, I've, tried, I've done my best when I was in pocket to be the parent that they needed me to be so they could be as successful as they needed to be in this life that was going to come for them whether they were ready or not. Yeah. See, you ain't got to prepare your children, which is, which is sad because life is coming from, for them like it came for us. Some of us, as old as we are, are still jacked up because we, one, we were never prepared. And two, at some point, you never realize you need to make adjustments. Yeah. It's just that serious. But, so the person makes the title with their integrity, not the title making the person. So, this stuff fell in my spirit. And I'm going to, I promise y'all, I'm going to be short, sweet. Luke, I think it's Luke 14 chapter. I can go there right here. Luke 14. Luke 4. Look, Luke 4. Luke 4. Luke 4. Luke 4. Luke 4. Luke the 4th chapter. Luke the 4th chapter. Get to Luke the 4th chapter. Luke the fourth chapter. Everybody else ain't there yet. Luke the fourth chapter. Luke four. Luke four. Hey Amen. Luke four. Luke four and eighteen. Mm -mm. Everybody there? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Maybe one day we'll get the scriptures all on the screen. Y'all know it's coming. I'm, I'm busy for the Lord. Y'all know it's coming. Yeah. Amen. But until then, I thank God for everybody. Amen. If you don't have your Bibles or you don't have an app or something like that, that's okay. Um, the Word of God says, and this is the New King James Version, the Spirit and 4 and 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the accepted, acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. You may be seated. Now, when Jesus Christ... um read those scriptures, he confirmed what his assignment was. He boldly stood up with all the witnesses that were in the synagogue at that time and reminded them what his assignment was. Every last one of us having an assignment. You have something that God has purposely created you. Not apostle. Not this one or that one. He has purposely created you to fulfill and you to do. The problem is a lot of us haven't been fulfilling our assignments. And because we haven't been fulfilling our assignments, our families are jacked up. 
Our churches are jacked up. Our jobs are jacked up. There is nothing worse. And I believe. Because the Bible says as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the coming of the son of man. And I was like God. What, what could have been so bad. That you decided to wipe out the whole human race. Except for eight people and you're going to do it again this time not by flood because some of y'all got some boats see or you look at God you look at the wisdom of God he speaks in Genesis after he, after he destroys the earth and he says I ain't going to do that no more I see down the line he knows the end at the beginning I see down the line these boogers are going to get so smart and so wise. Oh, that's how God coming at us? What could we do to compensate for what he might do? And so we started building boats, ships, yachts, all sorts of vi uh, water, vehicle, water vehicles to even play on. So God said, nah. I ain't doing that. This time, I'm coming with fire. Yes. I don't know about you. I don't know much that can withstand the fire of God. Now, there are some things that could withstand fire. But I don't know anything that could withstand the fire of God and remain the same. Yes. To include you and I. That's why I don't look. I don't look to man for the answers. Thank God when he allows them the wisdom to have the answers. But I don't look to the, them for the answers. I look to the hills yes. from where my help comes from. Because I am confident that my help comes from the Lord and the Lord alone. Okay. And if God don't do it, I don't, I don't want it to be done. Amen. Period. Amen. And so, fast forward, now we're at this time where you got people literally doing them. Not caring about their assignments. But for you and I not to fulfill our assignments is to throw everything out of whack. There's chaos. And they're not care. It's not just chaos because of evil. A lot of this chaos is because a lot of us haven't accepted our assignments. You got parents. You got mothers killing their own children. If God has given you the grace for your womb to open up and for you to have a child, and that child is birthed on the earth, and then all of a sudden you say you reject your assignment and say I'm going to just kill this child. And that way, that I eliminate my assignment. It doesn't work like that. But this is the kind of stuff that's happening in the land. I mean, you name it, it's happening now more than ever before. Because we refuse to fulfill our assignments. And it's literally selfish. Because your assignment don't just affect you. What about the doorkeeper at the church? Don't keep it decides, you know what? They said it's a 10% chance of rain today. I don't think I'm going to church. A 10% chance of rain. Which basically means 10% of the viewing area will likely get some rain. Which might be in the form of drizzles. But the doorkeeper decides this Sunday. Because there's 10% chance of rain. I'm not going to church today. Who's supposed to be at the door? Even though somebody might step in. Mm -hmm. But if, the, if that person assignment is to be on that door. And God has ordained, when them, when, especially people that's not familiar with the ministry or the church to come through the doors. And God has ordained for them to know that they're in the right place based on the right doorkeeper being at the door. See, God has already given them some type of vision of what to look for and what to expect. But what happens is 
when we are out of position or we're not seeking to fulfill our assignments, we throw everything off as if it's going to be okay. Yeah. What happens when you don't give? Lights still got to be turned on. Yeah. AC, y'all still, y'all. when you do decide to come to church, you want the AC to be blowing. Or you want the heat to be blowing if it's if it's cold outside. But what happens when you stop giving? Or what happens? Look, oh look, Apostle, I had a chance to go to the Super Bowl. It was five thousand dollars. <laughs> this was a chance of a lifetime. As almost the kingdom will be just fine. Now the king will be just fine. Oh yeah, God, Christ, they're gonna be all right. But for those of us that rely on the kingdom operating accordingly, mm -hmm. according to God's principles, mm -hmm. we need everybody to be faithful Amen. in yeah. every area of your life. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Not just in your giving. What about your prayer life? Mm -hmm. We got a habit of only talking to God when things are rough. Yeah. When things are going bad. Yeah. Any other time, we ain't got time for them. We going throughout our day doing our thing. As if, I don't know. As if God is on automatic. He going to do it. He going to do it. Can he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he can. We got all these cliches, but it's not reality for people that disconnected. You disconnect from God for just one second. It, you're not going to correct that nope. immediately. Nope. And he's going to intentionally not let it easily be corrected okay. so you get you get the point. Yes. You need him. Yes. He yes. doesn't need yes. you. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. That's why I could be here to all wee hours of the night. That's why I could do the things that I do. That's why when it comes to God and the kingdom, I always bring my Best. Now the job, I might go to job sleep time. Huh. At home, I might tell the wife, look, you had to order some pizza or something. I ain't I don't feel like cooking. I might shortchange everybody else, but I'm never going to shortchange God. Yeah. 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 Just right. not going to happen. That's right. Because I found out he's never shortchanged me. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even when I missed it. Uh -huh. Man. Pastor the missed it some time, and it was nothing but his grace. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. I'm like, God, Thank you, Lord. I was looking for God to discipline me. Amen. I was looking for God to not allow something to happen. And he He stepped in and he, because he saw something in my heart. Yeah. Yes, we all are human. Yes, we are. And we, as you <clears throat> make mistakes. We do. But some of our mistakes are intentional. Yes. 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 And so those type of mistakes, oh yeah, he gets us. Yeah. But the mistakes that we make, innocent mistakes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a time I forgot to pay a bill. Mm -hmm. And um, it could have got ugly. And when I finally remembered, because of all the stuff that be on my plate, when I finally remembered, I was ready to take my lick. I was ready to take, I was at look, I was like, hey, I had no excuses. I had too much, I'm telling myself, hey, this is what you get for having too much going on. And then I, I, I you know, you had no conversations with yourself. I was like, well, dog, Amos, I wouldn't be doing all the stuff I'm doing if I, if I had more help. I'm talking about, you know, I know y'all might have thought I was crazy. <laughs> But I was having this type of conversation, this one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, when I got in contact with the people, it was weird. I didn't realize that I had been paying extra. I was paying extra. I didn't, know, I didn't realize why God had it on my heart and in my spirit to pay more. I know the bill was, say, $150, and I'm giving them two because the grace was there. I mean, I wasn't thinking about taking that other 50 and blowing it at Applebee's or something. God had in my spirit, the bill is 150, so I kept giving them two. I kept giving them two every month, giving them two. So when I called them up and I said, yeah, look, I, 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 man, I'm sorry, I, I, met, I, I, I slipped. 
They say like you were, I'm pay, I was like paid up for like six months. Amen. And y'all didn't tell me? <laughs> y'all know what I could have been doing with that money? <laughs> I mean, I was doing what God needed me to do. But I mean, you know how all that stuff go across your mind and like, man, you know. Uh, but I, I see that as no more than God's grace. When you are on your assignments, God got you. He got you from the beginning to the end. What you don't want to do is neglect your assignment and then expect God to, I don't know, I, I blow your mind some kind of way. Because he doesn't operate like that. You got, you got needs. I got needs. This is a scripture we use all the time. Oh, uh, Philippians 4.13. Mm -hmm. Is that it? My God shall supply. Is that it? Is that what he said? Yeah. Wait, wait, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. We so often take the scripture out of context. And if nothing else, my master's, my master's degree taught me how to do some research. Because we'll say that scripture all the time. My God, let me go. Let me go there. Let me go there. I love going there. And get your Bible. You can go there too. And that look. Get some of that dust off your Bible. Amen. You know what? Look, some of y'all, I love technology. Because some of y'all, uh, you know how when you don't use apps and stuff enough, it tells you do do you some of y'all, is, is, is your phone telling you you might want to delete your Bible app because you don't use it? Oh, oh, oh. I'm telling you, my, I mean my my phone and my tablets will tell me that, hey, you ain't used this app in a while. Uh, matter of fact, it's been a good minute. Do you want to delete it? Is that the case with some of y'all's Bible apps on y'all phones? Am I meddling? I ain't trying to meddle. I ain't trying to meddle. I, I'm not trying to meddle. Oh, uh, this is my appreciation. Yeah, yeah. Huh? I ain't trying to meddle. Yeah. But look what he says. This is the Philippians 4 and 13. Because we use these scriptures like it's a, like waving a wand. And my God shall supply all my... Wow. Let me watch this. Um, no, no, 13 says I can do all things through Christ. That's not it. Da, 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 Ah, 19. And my God shall supply all your need according to, your, uh, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's what Apostle Paul prophesied. Oh, he's speaking over these people's lives. He, he didn't speak it over your life. I got you. He spoke it over the Philippians life. But the principle is still there. So I'm not trying to squash anybody's bubble. The principle that God is the one that supplies all of our needs. And we know according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, we know he's got plenty. Well, when you go up, Okay. Um, okay. Verse 15. Because why would Apostle Paul say what he said with such confidence? Because y'all are just taking one scripture, 4 and 19, out of context and using it like y'all gonna, gonna move God. That's not how this goes. Yeah. And that's how bills get unpaid. That's how cars get repossessed. That's how houses get foreclosed on. This is, there's something that goes before that for you to expect God going to supply your every need. Look what he says in 15. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me Concerning giving and receiving, but you own it. You stepped up in my time of need. Nobody else did this. So he goes on to say, Amen. Um, da, 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 da. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once, a, uh, once and again for my necessities. So you didn't do this. This wasn't a one time gift. You kept supplying. My needs. Mm -hmm. You kept looking out for me when I couldn't look out for myself. You kept stepping in. You kept showing up and showing out to the glory of God. Yes. That's 16. 17 says, uh -huh. 
-huh. Not that I seek the gift. I thank y'all. I'm not doing all the things that I'm doing for the gift. He says, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. There's something being stored up on your behalf every time you do what you do, amen, to the glory of God out of obedience. Something happens. Something's planted. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. You can expect a harvest of corn if you plant corn. Yeah. Yeah. You can expect a harvest of watermelon if you plant watermelon, but even in those, you got to plant them in season. Man. This is true. This is true. I love mustard green. But they don't grow in the summertime like they do in the winter. I love cabbage. It don't grow in the summertime like it does in the winter. So it's about sowing in season. And a lot of us have missed our season because the blessings you received wasn't just for you. It was for the work of of the kingdom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why didn't you think of the kingdom first? Amen. Why, as soon as we get blessed and everybody says, it, Amen, you know, boy, I win that lottery. The first thing I'm going to do is give the church my tithe. Uh oh. <laughs> now, you done got 1.5 billion. You giving your church, giving the church your tithes. Ain't no sacrifice. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Why you don't do like J.C. Penny? Mm. Uh -oh. J.C. Penny said, Lord, if you bless me, I'll give you the 90 and I'll live off the 10. Yes, they still around. Yes, this is true. While Sears and Kmart and some others have closed down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. People talk about Chick-fil-A, but they closed on Sunday. That's right. Sacrifice. Yes, I believe they'll be just as busy on a Sunday as, as they are yes. Monday through Saturday. Mm -hmm. The way them people be in them line. Yes. I'm like, they got to be putting something in, the, in that chicken mm -hmm. that ain't natural. Because all it is is chicken. I'm looking for something else. Chick, what's it? Come on, okay, all right, okay. I had chicken yesterday. Give me some. No, every day is chicken. <laughs> Just like what we're gonna be eating today. <laughs> Can't get away from chicken. Jesus. So anyway, so Apostle Paul says, I'm not looking for the gifts, but because of what you're giving, there's something going towards your account. He says in 18, indeed, I have all and abound. I am full and having received from Ephroditus the things sent from you, a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. Then he says, because now he can say this because he has tangible evidence of their of their of their sacrifices. See, a lot of us are quoting this scripture and there's no tangible evidence of your sacrifice. So, Apostle Paul says, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus because of what preceded that. He wants to do the same thing for you and me. He wants to supply an abundance of what we need so that overflow can help the kingdom, help whatever church and ministry that you are part of. No, I, I said this, I've been saying this, I don't know, maybe since I've been in Christ. When it comes to the kingdom, the kingdom shouldn't lack for nothing. Yes, <laughs> as blessed as we are. Yes, Lord. You better know it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the uh, I mean, I don't know what the unemployment rate is in here, but uh, I think it's pretty low. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that means everybody needs are being supplied by the grace of God. When is that going to resonate to those to, to to the needs of the kingdom, reflecting your needs being supplied? Because this is bigger than this. This is bigger than this. It's, it's, 
I'm telling you these things because it's bigger than this. Because you, who knows what church you belong to or what ministry you belong to. But why should that church or that ministry struggle or suffer as long as you are a part of it? Amen. Amen. You are blessed and highly favored. There's no doubt in my mind. Yes. But when it's going to look like, when it, when is that going to look like that blessed and highly favored? at the churches and the ministries we represent. Amen. Or that we know that's praying for us. Yes. A lot of times me and my wife, when, when we call a corporate fast, my wife said, they ain't, you know they ain't gonna fast. But we gotta fast anyway. Because maybe one day they're gonna get it. They're gonna catch on. And then we're going to see God move so fast. It's going to be almost scary. Because I know he can. But what's messing me up, uh, Sister Power, why he's not. I know he can, but why he's not moving. I know he can, but why is he not? Because everybody's not fulfilling their assignments. Why would God bless a mess? Put his name on a mess. That's not even trying to be a message. You know, some messes like, Lord, I want you to do something with this mess. But then there's some messes, God, I need you to bless my mess so I can keep being messed up. No. No. This time, y'all. This time. Um, with with the uh, saltwater wedge, I'm like, man, I ain't never heard this stuff before. <laughs> saltwater wedge, and oh my God, these people playing with Israel and Israel bombing the heck out of it. Oh my God, if we don't see the writing on the wall to get to to find another gear different than what you've been using, something seriously off. And you're not going to have anybody to blame that's right, that's right. but you yes, at the end of the day. Yes, I tell people all the time, and I'm through. Nobody owes you nothing. Right, right. Keep living. You're going you're gonna to find that out real quick. Yeah. Nobody owes you nothing. Yeah. Matter of fact, God tells you in the word, if they owe you anything, they owe you love. Yeah. And sometimes, hey amen, my love, you're not going to agree with my love. Because sometimes my love is tough. Yes, is. But that's what God told me. That's what I owe you. I owe you love. And sometimes we need tough love. Amen. Sometimes we need it. Especially if we are off track. And off our assignments. So I love y'all, man. I really, truly do. Uh, I definitely thank God for the sacrifice that everybody made because I know Nashanta made a serious sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> See, I got to mess with her. I got to mess with her. Hey, man, because that joke will be breaking it. Oh, my God. Keep me on my knees. But I love you, Nashanta. I love you. I truly do. Oh, but y'all, I love y'all. I definitely thank God for y'all and the sacrifices that y'all have made. And my prayer is that according to your sacrifice, that God will reward you mightily. Oh, that's my heart. I, truly, regardless of you being faithful to God or not, I, my heart is that when you make a sacrifice, that God responds with some type of reward to make you like, light bulb goes off and makes you want to, you know, do more, mm -hmm. you know. Because uh, he tells us and reminds us, this last thought, uh, by loving kindness, have I drawn all men unto myself? Lord, I pray for loving kindness to be poured out upon us all in such a way where we want nothing and no one more than you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You ain't get the memo? Okay, where you at?
Back in the days, our mom had to say story. Was tell us a lie. God don't need us. We need God. And we should have to only call on him when we're in trouble, in pain, when we need. We're supposed to call on him all the time. Good, bad, and ugly. But right now, it's your time. My time. Repentance is already in the heart. But when you repent, it's a remorse. Is we're going to keep doing it. We got to come into a place and realize that this is the last days, y'all. I don't care how much you want a fancy car, house, you got your bucket list, you got what I want to do, jump off a bridge or whatever. You do all that, but it's still coming. And your soul needs to be where it's supposed to be. Because the man was on the cross with Jesus. Like I say, if we all in here saved, say amen. amen. If nobody need no help in salvation, forgiveness, hurt, pain, even what dad was talking about. Sometimes we get in a place of when it comes to our money, it's not ours. Sorry. It's not ours. I don't care how hard you work for it. I don't care if you dig down to the bottom trying to get to hell. It's not ours. It belongs to him. And as God gave Father the message, he told us in Philippians, he'll supply all our needs according to our riches and glory. But why would he supply you if you keep doing it your way? He needs emptiness. When you wake up in the morning, do you ask God what he wants you to do? Or you just go ahead and get ready for work, go take care of the kids, go lay back down, watch the stories. And like Daddy said, when your phone say, Oh, you ain't read it in a long time. You want to delete this? But we got time for everything else in this world. But we only got 24 hours. But by the time 24 hours come, we exhausted. I don't even care. We have no kids no more. This world exhausts you. People call you on the phone. You'll be wild from talking to them for a minute if they got that negative energy. That's why God say you have to depend on him for everything. That's right. So if you're clean, you know you don't need him. Say amen. amen. Heavenly Father, here we are to, here today for you, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for this appreciation. We thank you for the fall our Father has teach us today, Father God. Something new. I love the way he wore his clothes. In the name of Jesus. Something different. But Father God, we just thank you, Lord God. From coming in our heart, Father God, cleaning us up, making us empty, Father God, and realize that we can't do nothing apart from you, Father God. So, Lord God, everyone sitting here today, Father God, if they have anything in their heart, Father God, show them, teach them, and let them know, Father God, you can't get to heaven if you have unforgiveness in your heart. You can't get to heaven if you can't love your enemies and you love your um, neighbor, Father God. And you gotta love yourself in order to do that. Plus, they gotta love you first, Father God. Lord God, let them put you first now, Father God, in their lives, Father God. And Lord God, whatever they need of, when it comes to only you, Father God, you do your own work. And Lord God, let your miracle signs show, Father God. This is the day that we say, Lord, thank you. Because we're going to change our wicked ways and walk your ways. In the name of Jesus, amen.